All right, everyone, we're back here continuing our coverage from the Open Source Security Summit in Austin. Um, our next guest is Derek Townsend. Town Townsend, like Townsend, Pete. Like Pete Townsend. Um, Derek's with Legit Security, too legit to quit. Um, we've, we've actually covered Legit Security on TechStrong TV before, but they are an exhibitor here, and we didn't really talk about it. Up, We're on the second floor here at the JW Marriott. Um, I believe it's the third, no, it's up on the floor. fourth floor. Fourth floor, there's the uh, sponsors exhibit area. It's a large exhibit area. Legit is one of the uh, exhibitors there. But on top of that, they're also a member of the Open SSF. I always, Open Source Security Foundation, OSSF. And uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about supply chain, some other stuff. But anyway, Derek, welcome. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. It's great to be here. Thanks. You know what I'd like to get out of the way, though, and I, I didn't mention it to you when we when we first started, which is, look, not everyone out here knows legit security. I, you know, yeah. I said, oh, we've covered them before, but not everyone watched that either. So why don't we start there, man? Let's let's give them a little legit background and sure. a little bit of your background. Sure. So uh, just background on the company. So Legit Security is headquartered in Tel Aviv, uh, but almost all of our sales and marketing activity right now is in North America. So we're selling to uh, larger enterprises, and it's a software supply chain security solution. I think the, uh, the interesting thing is it's a really popular space right now. So there's a lot of vendors talking about software supply chain security. So when you even say that now, you kind of have to define what that means to you. Well... Not only, and we're going to define that yeah. in a minute, but not only that, I mean, when was Legit founded, do you know? Uh, yes, it was back in uh, 2019, so it was just prior to Solar Winds. Right, sometimes just, as I've, always, I've learned this lesson in business, sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart, <laughs> and man, what a good time to get yeah. into software supply chain security, right? That, the whole world's blown up since then. Let's talk a little bit about you, though. What's your background? Oh, I've been doing software startups for quite some time. Um, bounced around in different areas, uh, developer tools, uh, cloud management solutions, identity management, which got me into cyber, and now here. Same here. I've been, I've been chasing that. Well, so TechStrong's not venture-backed, so it's my, this was my blog, <laughs> and it became this. But um, yeah, I, I know how that goes, too. Um, so let, let's talk a little software supply chain security. As we said, it's it's certainly a, a hot topic, even here, right? This is our second day here, you know, uh, I was going to say filming, but that's an old word. Recording and speaking with folks, broadcasting, streaming. And, you know, that's been topic one. Yeah. Software supply chain security. And it was interesting. I had a conversation earlier today with a, one of our guests. And it's like, so this is a word that's come into vogue, let's say, in the last two years, right? Maybe since solar right. winds. But really, what we talk about when we say software supply chain security goes back a lot longer than two years, right? We've always been yep. worried. I mean, look, I, you know, I remember selling security in the federal government space years and years ago, 15 years ago. And they were worried about backdoors and about what was embedded in the software they were, they were installing back then. We just didn't right. call it supply chain security. Right. What's Legit's take on this? Well, I think a lot has um, transpired with DevOps that has made software supply chain security a more urgent problem and a much broader attack surface. I think, rewind the clock years ago, there was always a risk of insider attack. There was always a risk of some open source libraries mm -hmm. potentially causing a vulnerability. But now when you look at DevOps and what's happened across the SDLC, all the different tools, all the different developers and collaborators that get involved, all those moving parts have, have gotten much more complicated. And although cloud security and other aspects of code scanning technologies are getting more mature, looking at the SDLC and all of its complexity and all of its moving parts has not caught up. And SolarWinds was the wake-up call, and it wasn't the only one. No. Several after that. 
And now that's why you're seeing this rush into the space. Yeah. So I, I don't disagree, but I, I would add to it is, is in this way. When we look at what DevOps is about, right, and there's no official definition and all that, but certainly it was a, a big dose of agile yeah. and some a pinch of lean IT, right, added into that and, and you know, how we do dev and ops and, and the whole software development life cycle, pipelines, all of these things. You know, it, it introduced, especially from the lean heritage, from lean manufacturing and deming and all that stuff, right? It introduced this analog of, of people building software the way we build stuff in assembly lines. Yes. You know, on a pipeline, and, and, and it goes along the pipeline getting finished until it's delivered, until it's deployed. And, and so I think the very name Software Supply Chain Security comes from supply chain security, yeah. right, that we sure. see there. So I, I think that's the heritage for it, of where that analogy comes in. For something that, as we both said, we, has been done before necessarily, but we've never had software be developed in a factory sort of mode. Yes that DevOps is introduced. I, th I think factory is a good word mm -hmm. because factory also connotes automation. Yep. And the automation is there at, yep. at all of these uh, multiple steps. And it's also got this uh, sense of kind of lean manufacturing and just-in-time assembly that takes place from multiple different sources and dependencies. Absolutely. And that's part of the complexity problem. Um, and then you add on top of that, you've got different developers, different teams, contractors, other folks coming in and out. It's, it's a very dynamic environment. And that is representative of modern kind of physical supply chains today too. Absolutely. So let me ask another question then. I've spent the last two days talking probably to a dozen people already about software supply chain security, S-bombs and, and so forth. Yeah. My fear is every single person I spoke to gave me a different story. Yeah. Or not a different story, but a different take on this issue. And, and that's okay. You know, th there's no one right way, one wrong way. The world doesn't go necessarily go black, white. Right. There's gray. But my take is, are we going to extend it and embrace it for every single vendor out here yeah. until you Unixify it, right? <laughs> Where, you know, you have all these different flavors, but they're not really compatible. You know, cyber is interesting. And, and you look at the evolution of different categories of cyber solutions. It takes a little bit of time for it to gel and for the boundaries to kind that of That could be right where we are. And categorize. And I think this is early days. Um, there is no formal category defined by someone like a Gartner or a Forrester yet for what software supply chain security is. But I think what you're seeing is that when you look at the attacks, they come from a lot of different vectors and there's a lot of lateral movement. And so someone can claim a kind of a more narrow scope solution to software supply chain security. It's not exactly wrong. It could be one attack vector. But when we think about it, we, we think that what the market needs is something more holistic that looks across everything from when the developer submits the code, it goes through the build server, you go through the artifact repo, and it gets just ready to go into production. That to us is the scope of the software supply chain. So it's the pipeline, it's the systems and infrastructure in that pipeline, it's the developers and the collaborators that are interacting in it, and it's also the code that's passing through it. But where we draw the line internally is that we're not a code scanning tool. We're not SAS, we're not SCA. Those are well-defined categories. Lots of vendors in it, mature mm -hmm. tech. We're not trying to recreate that wheel. But there are some other pieces of code security like secret scanning and scanning infrastructures of code that still have space and we think are still part of that integral solution. But our take is don't try to replace them but there's value in finding where they are positioned across the software supply chain. So sometimes uh, you know, your SA tool got turned off or sometimes you don't have SaaS scanning on a product line, you should. 
And just getting visibility into that is really important. And the other thing that we're finding, this is at the intersection of dev and security, DevSecOps. Development teams might know some of this, kind of back of the envelope or back of their hand. They know where these tools are. The security folks don't necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so it starts in our mind getting visibility into that whole pipeline, that whole SDLC first, including knowing where the other security controls are. And now you can start taking action. Now you can start doing important things to tighten up your security posture. Love it. I want to talk a little OSSF participation. So Legit's a corporate member of, yeah. of the OSSF, along with some of the, you know, the biggest names. IBM, Microsoft, Google, yeah. you know, big, big tech. What do you guys, like, what's your, and I don't mean you personally, but sure. what do you see as the role of Legit security in this kind of organization? Yeah, I mean, um, this is something that really comes from our founders um, that uh, were part of the IDF and have seen these things in the real world. Mm -hmm. And they want to, you know, truly kind of help out the broader community, not just our customers. And that's in a couple different ways. One is the research that we have. So we ha have an actual security research team within Legit. We're actively looking for vulnerabilities and publishing them, doing responsible disclosure. Mm -hmm. we, we had one um, two months ago. We have another one coming out later this month. So part of it is finding those vulnerabilities and sharing them before they get out of control. But the other one that's probably going to be even more impactful is the open source tools that we're going to contribute. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned earlier, you know, our platform does this automated discovery across this whole pipeline. So you get to see what's out there. We're going to carve off small pieces of that capability. For example, looking at your GitHub instances. Is it properly configured? Has a developer taken a private repo and made it public, which they shouldn't do? Mm -hmm. That sort of security posture management for a GitHub repo is something that we're now actively working at to provide to the open source community as a tool that folks can use on their own to improve their own software supply chain security for that piece. Now, if, if they find that useful, they might find legit security, and they might find out that we do not just that, but all the other repos, all the other build servers, all the other artifact repos, and everything else. So it could be an entry point to that, but in the meantime, it definitely helps the community at large. Love it, absolutely. Um, yesterday was, uh, I, I forget what they call it, but like affiliate day or whatever, and the Open SSF had their um, kind of event. Would, not to say that, you know, it's very embedded into everything going on this week. But I'm wondering if you were involved in that at all, what your impressions were from what you've seen so far. I, I wasn't involved in the event, but I think the open source community as a whole has a really important role in just the topic of software supply chain security. Um, and, it, it, you know, part of it is uh, SEA tools and just the... Um, vulnerabilities that can be introduced through open source libraries consumed in software. That in and of itself is a huge deal. I, I, you talk to some people and they'll tell you commercial software today is composed anywhere from you know, up to 80% or even more of open source libraries. That's not gonna change. No. So continuing to focus on that and, and bring more attention to that space is really important. And then I think it takes you in other important areas about all the other dependencies associated with building software today. S-bombs are part of that, which is picking up uh, momentum. You think so? Yeah, and, <laughs> and, you know, and there's, a, there's other things. It's not just open source libraries. There's other right. dependencies across the board. So the more people talk about it, the more people start to take, uh, put their attention to how, how this is being managed and it's not a mystery anymore and people are looking at ways to secure it, I think it's better for everyone. I, I don't disagree with you at all. Hey, you know what we didn't tell people? If they want to get information on legit security, L-E-G-I-T? Yeah, legitsecurity.com. Okay. Um, come check out a demo. Yeah? You can go to the website. There's a book a demo button. Uh, you know, we found that like a lot of these vendors, they'll talk about software supply chain security. When you see the product work, 
then the light bulbs really go off. And, and that's not unlike us. So go check out a demo. Excellent. Hey, man, Derek, thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the week here at Open Source Summit. Check out Legit Security. They're a member of OpenSSF. We're live here in Austin. We'll be back in a moment with another guest.